Come on in, everybody. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in the room. Come on in the room, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hope y'all can hear me. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and like and share if you don't mind. Amen. Let everybody know that, that we are live streamed. We are live streamed. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We greet you in the name that is above every name, uh, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Go ahead and just uh, share this like this and we'll wait for about nine more people to to come on in amen amen praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord everybody i see everybody popping on amen this is wednesday night bible class Hallelujah. As y'all can see, I am pretty much back to my old self. Uh, got me some dress clothes on. Hallelujah. The wifey asked, why are you wearing dress clothes? Ain't nobody in public out going to see you. I said, I just want to just wanna feel good. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. I see y'all on here. Amen. 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 I see y'all on here. Hallelujah. Hope everybody's day has been good. Amen. Hope everybody has been enjoying this wonderful weather. Wonderful weather. Amen. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with prayer, and then we'll go ahead and get started on tonight's Bible class. If you can hear me good, just tell me I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, most gracious fathers, in the name of Jesus, we, we bless you and we worship your holy name. Lord, we thank you for just another opportunity just to, Lord God, hear a word from you. Uh, thank you for another opportunity just to dive into your word, to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Lord, we pray that you crown us with the wisdom and knowledge and understanding, oh God. Open up our minds, open up our ears, open up our eyes, oh God. Open up our understanding on tonight. And we'll thank you, we'll praise you, and we'll bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 everybody. Amen, everybody. All right, glad y'all can hear me. All right, I want to draw your attention to Mark chapter number nine. Mark chapter number nine. Tonight, we're going to speak from the subject, increase your faith. Increase your faith. Your faith. Increase your faith. Increase your faith. We thank the Lord. Amen. For the report that I, I tested negative for coronavirus. And so we thank the Lord for his mighty hand and for his healing power. Hallelujah. And I feel, I feel uh, brand new. And so just grateful for all of you for praying and all of you for encouraging me uh, for almost almost four weeks. Uh, thank you so much. Amen. I appreciate you. Increase your faith. That's tonight's Bible class. Increase your faith. Mark chapter 9. We're going to read verse 17 through 19, okay? Mark chapter number 9, 17 through 19, and it says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnashes with his teeth, and pineth away. And, and I spake to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Bring him unto me. Tonight's topic, increase your faith. Increase your faith. Now, as Christians, we know uh, that we have many um, situations, many experiences, what we would call uh, mountain peaks. Uh, we have many experiences where we have mountain peaks. We also have many experiences where 
we experience uh, low valleys. And I believe that sometimes God has to do that to let us know I'm not just the God of the mountain, but I'm also God in the valley. And that's why David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou is with me. And so we have to go through difficulties. And, and, and sometimes, uh, and even as Christians, uh, we sometimes experience some of the same difficulties that an unbeliever may face. Now, yes, I had coronavirus. I had it. And some people uh, would probably be thinking, how can a man uh, that is supposed to have faith uh, get the coronavirus? How can a man who is supposed to have power uh, have coronavirus? Uh, if you uh, listened into the live stream of me when I preached last, almost four weeks ago, uh, my t uh, in my sermon, I told them uh, that you may get the coronavirus, uh, but if you get it, God can heal it. After all, since he created the body, he also can heal the body. And so uh, sometimes we have to experience some of the same things that people who aren't saved, uh, some of the same situations. We have to experience death, uh, just like someone who isn't saved has to experience a loss of a loved one. We have to experience some times when we feel lonely, uh, just like someone who isn't saved may experience some times when they are lonely. The difference, however, in our experiencing the same situations, the difference is the power of faith that resides in the life of every believer. That is the difference. Everybody goes to a, through a time in life where they may feel discouraged, where they may feel left down, where, may, where they may feel abandoned, or they may feel like uh, nobody cares about them, or everybody has forgotten them. Amen. But the difference between an unbeliever and the people of God is that we have the power of faith that resides down on the inside, amen, and our Holy Ghost sanctified souls. Now, one thing you have to learn about faith is, is faith equips the child of God to maneuver successfully through the obstacles of life. And that is the reason why it is very important, brothers and sisters, that we have faith. Amen. And if you don't have a whole lot of faith, amen, God can start with a small amount of faith. For he said, if you have faith the size, the grain of a mustard seed, he said, you can speak to that mountain and that mountain has to move and to be cast into the sea. Hallelujah. So uh, the, the believer, amen, has faith that equips him to maneuver successfully through the obstacles of life. Hallelujah. Corona was an obstacle. But let me tell you something, saints. I never lost my faith and I never lost my praise. Y'all ain't, ain't going to help me tonight. I feel like preaching, really. I said I never lost my faith and I never lost my praise. Hallelujah. Even while I was sick, even while I was laid up in my house, hallelujah, I still had a song down on the inside. I still would find myself saying, oh, the blood. The blood of Jesus found myself saying, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Found myself singing, can't nobody do me like Jesus, and can't nobody do me like the Lord. Why? Because I got some faith down on the inside. Faith, faith, faith tells me, faith tells me that even though it don't look good, it still works for the good. For the Bible said that we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God and are the call according to his purpose. And so let me calm down because I feel like preaching, but, but, but faith, faith equips us to be able to maneuver successfully in the obstacles of what we call life. Amen. We may have some mountains. We may even have some valleys. Amen. But realize that we also have victory. Y'all ain't going to help me tonight. Did you hear what I said? I said, yes, you may have a mountain. Yes, you may have a valley in your life. Hallelujah. But don't forget that you also have victory. Mm. Y'all ain't going to help me tonight. I said, yes, you have a mountain. Yes, you have a valley. 
Almighty. But remember, you also have victory. Somebody just shout victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You also have victory. And so let's look at this text. Can we look at this text? Let's look at this text. Let's dissect. Let's dissect this text. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9. We'll read verse 17 and 18. And, and it says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son who has a dumb spirit. And, and, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away, and spake to the disciples. And when he went to the disciples, asking them to cast out this spirit, the Bible says that the disciples could not cast out the dumb spirit. Put yourself in this father's shoes for just a second. The Bible records that not only is this, this man's son, but the Bible declares that this is this man's only son. When he goes to the disciples, thinking that they could help him, because after all, they've been with Jesus, and, and they should have some kind of faith. But guess what? They had no faith to exercise. Saints of the living God, it is a tragedy when you've seen God work, but you're still doubting. I'm going to say that again. Saints, it's a tragedy when you've seen the work of God, but you still doubt him. Can I tell you that when they told me I had a coronavirus, not one time did I think about dying. Y'all ain't going to help me. I said, when they told me I had a coronavirus, not one time did I think I was going to die. Not one time was I scared that I was going to die. Amen. Because to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Hallelujah. So whether he kept me here or whether he took me, I knew that I still had the victory. Hallelujah. But it's a tragedy to see God work, to know God works. But you still doubt him. You've seen God perform all these miracles. Yet you won't believe him to heal you of coronavirus. You've seen God raise the dead. Yet you won't believe him to heal and take away your headache. Come on church. You've got to increase your faith. If somebody happens to be in your house. Hallelujah. Can you just look at him real quick. Square in the eyes. And said, baby, it's time to increase your faith. It's time to increase your faith. What do you mean, pastor? It's time to take your faith up another level. Sorry, I'm not supposed to be screaming. It's time to take your faith up to another dimension. Check this out. This man went to the disciples looking for them to help him. To, to cast this dumb spirit out of his son. But when he went to them, they could not do it. Check this out. It wasn't God's fault that the disciples didn't have power because they did. They had power to cast out the demon. They neglected to exercise it. Church of the living God, don't get mad at God because you're still sick. Maybe, just maybe, you got the power down on the inside to recover, but you neglect to exercise the faith. You have the form of godliness, but you're denying the power thereof. Oh, she took, oh, she might not. Yet, oh, she You got the form of God. You look good. You act good. You seem good, but, but do you really believe what you read? Do you really believe the gospel that you hear? For faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of the Lord. Don't get it twisted, church. The disciples had the power to deliver this young man from the dumb spirit. But they couldn't exercise it. They couldn't manifest it. Because they neglected to exercise their faith down on the inside. We're going to come back to this text. But let's just go backwards to Mark chapter number 6. 
Mark chapter number 6 and verse 7. Mark chapter number 6 and verse 7. This shows you that God gave them power. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two. Check this. And gave them power over unclean spirits. God gave them power over unclean spirits. They had the power. They just neglected to exercise the power. You got to exercise your faith, church. He! You got to ex exercise your faith. The more something is exercised, the more it will grow. The more something's exercised, the more it will grow. Check this out. There's people out in the world that have needs, and we are supposed to have the power. But what good is the power if we're not tapping into it? Y'all ain't gonna hear me tonight. There's people outside these four walls that have a need. Some people need hope. Some people need to be delivered. Some people need healing. Some people need to be saved. Listen, they're looking for the power, but what good is us having the power if we don't ever tap into the power? Y'all ain't going to help me. What good is having the power if you don't tap into the power? He! Lord, have mercy. The needs, the needs of humanity lay at the feet of Christians today. People are waiting for help. People are waiting for hope. They're waiting for different things from God. And God has given his church the awesome task of touching the world through the power of faith. If he wanted to, he could do it by himself because he's God. But the way he designed this thing is he designed this thing and he set it up to where he uses the people of God. And through the power of faith, for his power to be demonstrated. Whew. What do you mean, Pastor? All right, check this out. When people are sick, they come to us. Why? Because they know that we work for the great physician. I'll say that again. When people are sick, they come to the people of God because they know that the people of God work for the great physician. Even in coronavirus, the doctors don't know what's going on. The nurses can't explain it. All they tell you to do is go home, stay hydrated, and take some Tylenol. You mean to tell me with a life-threatening disease that's taking people out of here every single day, you just want me to go home, drink some water, and swallow some Tylenol? Honey, when you don't know who else to run to, you got the assurance of knowing you can run to Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who deliver and heal, heal of his people. Hallelujah. For he said in his word that with his stripes we are healed. What are you saying, Jay? We have the power and the authority to help. And we must not fail people and we must not fail God. God has entrusted you with his spirit. He's entrusted you with faith. He's gifted you faith. You know, faith is a gift. He's gifted you faith. He's trusting us not to let him down or not to let people down. Back to Mark chapter number nine, where our text was. Back to Mark chapter number nine, verse 19. I won't have you too much longer. I won't have you too much longer. I just wanted to stop by tonight to tell you to increase your faith. See, you got to get past the what things look like. You got to get past what it looks like. And stop looking out of your carnal eye. And start seeing through the supernatural. <laughs> Mark chapter 9, verse 19 says this. 
He answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Jesus, in this particular verse, in verse 19, he's at a point now with the disciples where he's stern. He's got aggravation in his voice. He's got a voice that is full of disappointment. His voice is raged with rebuke because the disciples should have grown and, and should have matured after being with him for a while. Church, some of us have been with the Lord for a while and there's no reason why we are in the same place today than we was two, three, four years ago. Amen. There's no reason why if you've been saved for more than two years, you're still drinking milk. Baby, it's time to graduate off milk and get you a real eye. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Because we've, we've had some experiences with God. I don't get scared when I get sick. I know he can heal me. If I lose everything, I know he'll provide for me. There's a song that says, you can't make me die. I know too much about him. Can we just pause right there? Because I feel the Holy Ghost. Can we just pause right there? And wherever you are, can you just shout from the roof? Uh, uh, the, from, the, from the roof. Just shout from the mountaintop. Can you just shout glory one time? Whee! Hallelujah. 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 Can you shout glory another time? Hallelujah. I feel this thing, church. Let's go, let's go to Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 8. <coughs> yes, I still have a little cough. They told me I'd have a cough for maybe two or three weeks after I've been sick. But I'll deal with a cough. I got paperwork that says I'm corona free. Come on, somebody. Matthew 10 and 8 says this. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead, cast out devils freely. Freely you have received and freely give. I've gifted you with my faith. Now I need you with your faith to deposit into somebody else's life. You've been with me too long to doubt me now. Why would you doubt me if I've never failed you? Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. I told shit time my night. Oh God, why would you doubt me if I've never failed you? Why? Why? Why would you doubt me? I'm not giving you reason to doubt me. Why would you doubt me if I've never failed? Haven't I always blessed you? Haven't I always made a way out of nowhere? Haven't I always brought you out of the wilderness? Haven't I always healed your body? Haven't I always delivered your spirit? Y'all excuse me tonight. Y'all excuse me. I just, I feel good down in my sanctified soul. Let's look at Matthew chapter number 17. We're almost done. Matthew 17. We're going to get back to the text. Matthew 17 and 17. Oh, God. He! Hey, Lord. Oh, God. 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 Matthew 17 and 17. I feel a prayer meeting in my spirit. Then Jesus answered and said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. How long? How long do I got to be with you until you finally realize that I am that I am? How long? What, what more is it going to take, church? For you to finally get this thing to click in your spirit. 
and click in your hand that you got to start believing what you read. Come on, somebody. I never died the whole time I was sick. I couldn't wait to get back to church. I couldn't wait to get back to work. Come on, somebody. Never doubted it. I was just trying to hurry up and get the process over with. Come on now. Mark chapter 9. Back to Mark chapter 9. We're going to finish out this text. Verse 23. Hee! Come on, somebody. We're going to finish it out. Mark chapter number 9, verse 23, and it says, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Here Jesus is talking to the father. He says unto that young boy's dad, If thou canst believe, all things are possible. To him that believeth. Here what God does is. He attaches a miracle. To the man's faith. And that's what God is doing to us. Every once in a while. He attaches a miracle. To your faith. What do you mean brother pastor? I told you. If you get sick. Lay hands on yourself. He'll attach a miracle to your faith. If you need him to bless you financially, lay hands on them bills. Come on, somebody. He'll attach a miracle to your faith. See, one thing God always does is, if you attach your faith with his promises, it, 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 it's almost like it pushes a button with God to where it causes him to act. It causes him to work some things out. For your favor. We're almost done. Faith accomplishes numerous things. We're going to talk about five real quick. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's almost done. I know I've been saying that the past 10 minutes. I'm almost done. We're going to finish out this text. But I'm, I'm going to give you five things that faith does. I'll give you five things <clears throat> that faith does. Number one, faith obtains a good report. Faith obtains a good report. Number two, faith presents a more excellent sacrifice. Faith presents a more excellent sacrifice. Every sacrifice I bring to God, if I attach my faith to it, it turns that sacrifice into excellence. Number three, faith propels us from the temporal to the eternal. Faith propels us from the temporal to the eternal. What are you saying? When you have faith, it doesn't matter what you're in right now. See, faith causes you to look beyond what you're in right now. And it helps you to see what's on the other side. See, I'm not looking at what's going on right now because I'm too busy looking at my future. Y'all like that right there, don't you? I want you to say that to yourself. Tell yourself, say, stop looking at right now and start looking at your future. Come on, somebody. That's what faith does. Faith, faith, faith causes you. It, 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 it's almost like it throws you in front of your problem. That's why faith, when you're going through some crazy things, faith will stand up in you and say, this too shall pass. Come on, somebody. Number four, faith acts on the promises of God. Faith acts on the promises of God. And last but not least, Number five, faith overcomes tremendous odds. Faith overcomes tremendous odds. Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. 
I see several people are watching. I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what your present circumstance is. I don't, I don't even know what your trial and your tribulation, the test that you may be going through right now. I don't know none of that because it's none of my business. But I do want to come by tonight to declare, hallelujah, and just to speak a word of encouragement to you, that if you increase your faith, hallelujah, the songwriter said, I got a feeling that everything will be all right. Hallelujah. Everything around you might not be all right, but there'll be a deep set of peace down in your soul. Somebody shout faith. Faith. Why am I shouting faith, preacher? Simply because you got to have it. You got to have it. Let's look at Hebrews chapter number 11. Some of y'all can probably quote, quote it. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Hebrews 11 and verse 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, you can't even put a smile on God's face. Without faith, you can't even please God. Oh, Them that come to him must believe that he is. What is he? What is he? Somebody said he's my everything. Somebody said he's my best friend. Somebody said he's my, he's my doctor in the sick room. Somebody said he's my lawyer in the courtroom. Somebody said he's my lily in the valley. Somebody said he's my bridge of a troubled water. You must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Daily I shall. Diligently seek the Lord. I'm seeking him while he may be found. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to Mark chapter number nine. We're wrapping it up now. We're wrapping it up. We're going to finish it up now. Mark chapter nine, verse 24. We're finishing the text. We're going to finish the text. The father now is looking at Jesus after he's looked at Jesus. God has told him, if thou canst believe all things as possible to him that believeth. He's about to attach a miracle to the man's faith. But in verse 24, the Bible says, and straightway the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Whew. Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Lord, I, I believe you can help me, but I just left your disciples that's been with you for a while now. And they told me they couldn't help me. Lord, I believe you. But this thing has been on me so long. I think just maybe you ain't going to take it off of me. Lord, I know you're God. I know you got all power. But Lord, it seems like instead of things getting better, the only getting no cold share, only getting worse. Lord, I believe you. I believe you. You can turn and take what the devil meant for evil and, and turn it around for my good. Lord, believe you but this thing has been on me I've been in this thing for far too long and maybe just maybe you want me to live with it the father said Lord I believe but I need you to help my unbelief the doubt that I have in me I need you to remove it and the faith that I have in me I need you to multiply it Y'all hear what I said? The doubt I have in me, Lord, take it away. But the faith I have, Lord, increase it. Lord, strengthen it. In 
Verse 25. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. In verse 25, you've got to see something. What you see in verse 25 is where Jesus finally stepped in, check this, and took charge. See, sometimes God will let you in something. And he may not come when you want him. Come on, somebody. But he's always right on time. I tell some people, just sit around for a moment. Jesus will intervene when it becomes a Jesus moment. Come on, somebody. What is a, genius mo a Jesus moment? A Jesus moment is when you've done, exhausted all your resources, and the only one you can re uh, turn to is Jesus. So that way, when it's all said and done, you can look back and say, that had to be God. So Jesus, he takes charge in verse 25. In the Greek, charge means epitasso which means he commanded. He spoke to the spirit and he commanded it to do two things. Number one, he commanded the spirit to come out of the boy. He commanded the spirit to come out of the boy. Number two, he commanded that the spirit not come back to that boy ever again. Read the text. He said, come out of him. And when the spirit came out of him, he said, enter no more into him. Leave him alone. What are you saying, pastor? The enemy you see today who told Shea, you will see no more. Woo! I wish y'all would just help me prophesy tonight and just look at the person next to you. If you ain't got nobody next to you, talk to yourself and say, self, Hallelujah. The enemy you see today, you'll see no more. Ah, Lord have mercy. Verse 26 says, And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead. And so much that many said, He is dead. The spirit made the boy convulse for a little bit. When it finally came out of the young boy, the young boy laid there almost lifelessly because he was not moving. People thought the young man was dead. Uh, don't never give up on something before it's time in church. Just because he ain't brought you out yet don't mean he ain't going to bring you out. Just because he ain't made a way yet don't mean he ain't going to make no way. Just because he ain't healed you yet doesn't mean he ain't going to heal you yet. Because God can always resurrect a dead situation. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me tonight. God can always resurrect a dead situation. What did he do in verse number seven? Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. And guess what? The young boy arose. The young boy arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples, this is verse 28, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? You've given us the power. Why couldn't we cast the spirit out of that young boy? And here's his answer in verse 29. And he said unto them, this kind can come by nothing but prayer and fasting. And he said unto them, this can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Whew. See, one thing you got to realize about faith is faith recognizes our limitations and releases us to walk into the limitless resources of God. That's what faith does. Let me say that again. 
Faith recognizes our limitation and releases us to walk into the limitless resources of God. You want to know why your faith ain't growing? You want to know why your faith ain't increasing? <laughs> you want to know why your faith isn't being strengthened every day? I'm going to tell you why. I got your answer. Some of us ain't fasting and some of us ain't praying. Come on, somebody. Let me say that again. Some of us ain't fasting and some of us ain't praying. We think God is supposed to give us everything. And we ain't supposed to work for nothing. We ain't been fasting. We're we too busy eating fast food. We're too busy in McDonald's line. What they got now? They got that app, Grubhub. When you can order your food and they, and, and they got DoorDash. Order your food and they bring it right to your door. Some of us couldn't tell you the last time we fasted. And oh Lord, please don't call a prayer meeting. Please don't call a prayer meeting. You hardly have prayer meetings anymore. You want to know why you can't cast out demons? You're not praying no more. You're not fasting no more. You ain't pushing the plate away no more. You want to know why your anointing isn't as strong? You're not fasting no more. You're not praying. These things can only come by fasting and praying. Ask yourself, how long did I talk to God today? Now, I'm not talking about over your food. You know, that little elementary prayer, some of us that are grown that are still saying, uh, God is great, God is good, and I thank him for my food. Come on, somebody. I I'm not talking about that elementary prayer that you do at night before you go to bed. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray to the Lord. My soul keep no, I'm talking about honey. I'm talking about a genuine prayer life with God. I'm talking about prayers that rebuke the adversary. Prayers that get demons fearful. Prayers that shake up the world. Prayers that reach the throne of God. Prayers that reach heaven's headquarters. Come on, somebody. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, what? And pray. I ain't even supposed to be acting like that. I'm supposed to be resting. But I'm telling y'all tonight, my faith has been increased. If I never felt like preaching before, I feel like preaching now. If I've never felt like teaching before, I feel like teaching now. Come on, somebody. I told death a couple weeks ago, cancel my funeral. I've decided to live. You hear me? Cancel my funeral. I've decided to live. I've decided to live. Increase my faith, God. Increase it. While you're increasing it, I'm going to exercise it. Whew. I'm going to step out on your word. I'm going to step out on a limb. Peter, when they was out on a boat, it wasn't that he was walking on water. He was stepping out on faith. And every once in a while, you got to step out on faith. It may not feel good, it may not look good, but I promise you, he's going to turn it around for your good. It won't always be like this. He's going to perfect that concerning you sooner or later. It's going to work in your favor. How you know, preacher? It's turning around for me. And it's turning around for you. I hope y'all have enjoyed Bible class tonight. I hope that something I said, you know, 
enlightened you, encouraged you, equipped you with some wisdom, some knowledge of the word of God. But I just wanted to stop by to remind you that your faith has to be increased. Is there any questions tonight? Any questions? Any questions before I get off here? You can ask me anything. You got a question, just comment it in the comments. Any questions? Any questions? Anybody got a question? Anybody? Oh, God. Anybody feel God here tonight? I feel God. Anybody got a question? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Any questions, church? No questions? All right. In the way of announcements, let's not forget, Lord willing, we'll be having drive-in church service on Sunday at 1130. Drive-in church service Sunday at 1130 out on the front lawn. Amen. Again, the rules, cars will be six feet apart. Nothing going in and out of the cars. One family per car. No one outside of the car for any reasons. Come and can you do me a favor this week? Can you come and when you come, can you bring your praise with you? Hallelujah. Bring your praise with you. And someone asked, am I preaching on Sunday morning? Yes, I will be preaching on Sunday morning. Y'all pray for me. Uh, but I got my papers uh, emailed on yesterday that I am that I tested negative for coronavirus, and uh, the doctors have given me the okay to go back out in the public to go back to work, and most importantly, they've given me the okay to come out and preach the undisputed word of God. And so, yes, the Lord be my helper. I will be preaching, Amen, on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. And somebody asked me on yesterday, uh, uh, how do you think you're going to preach? The doctor has asked me to kind of take it easy for the first couple of weeks of me preaching. Uh, he said, try to, you know, keep your energy because your strength isn't where it needs to be. You've been laid up for almost four weeks. And, and so uh, they've asked me to kind of take it easy. Amen. But there's no telling what can happen when the Holy Ghost takes over. Y'all hear me? There's no telling what will happen when the Holy Ghost takes over. So let, let's get the word out that Pastor will be back on Sunday morning. I will be preaching Sunday morning. My wife is going to get me for this, uh, but I feel like preaching Sunday evening also. And so y'all pray for me. Hallelujah. And I'll pray for you. I hope everybody is doing well. If you need anything, please don't hesitate uh, to get a hold of me. Uh, that's it. Thank you all so much again for tuning in tonight. And we'll see you, Lord willing, on Sunday morning. Again, God bless you. And may heaven smile on you is our prayer. God bless.